G'day and welcome to the Infronos. I'm Execute. Today I'm joined by Seer the Sixth, and our special guest is Vega Fell. Um, everyone knows who you are, Seer, so we'll get Vega. Uh, Vega, you are uh, you repair ships for a living, as in aircraft, I should say. I call them ships because I'm used to Star Citizen, but please tell us more about <laughs> yourself, sir. Yes, sir. So I uh, I'm an aircraft structural mechanic. I did about six years in the military, and then I have a combined about six to seven years outside the military, working mm. various airframes, uh, military and civilian. And also, I am a composite um, certified technician. And I worked on the largest aircraft in the world, the Star of the Launch Project at a Mojave spaceport. Mm. Now, I think I think the obvious thing in the room we should say is, can you tell us a little bit about why you've got a mask on? Like, where are you in the world at the moment? <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a contractor in the Middle East currently working on military aircraft. And just to protect my identity a little bit, and also in case I uh, say something I'm not supposed to, uh, mm. I'd like just a, a little bit of extra protection. <laughs> yep. And I think that's reasonable and fair. So thank you for your time today. Um, where do you gentlemen want to kick it off today with uh, today's uh, episode? I'll, I'll, I'll turn over to you, sir. Oh, wait. I always forget before we get started. Hashtag Jacob in the comments. Um, if you want to win yourself an F7A upgrade and Super Hornet, and if, as you may tell, I am starting to lose my voice again. Going very squeaky when I laugh at the moment. So yeah. All right, see ya. Over to you, mate. So basically what Vega and I were discussing was um, overall the how CIG would try to implement repair into the game because we both know from our professions how repair can go and then after we discussed the overall evolution of cig's repair theory i guess or structure we were talking about the different tiers and how we anticipated it would be and uh we can we can start with uh vega you can explain um what overall uh, from our point of view how cig could do yeah. repair versus how we do repair so I think the big difference between how realistic repairs work and how CIG has to implement it is you, you look at an aircraft, you have to realize that um, there is a part number for every single piece of that aircraft. And every single piece of that aircraft is tracked. And there's a manufacturer for every little piece of that aircraft. So you got millions of pieces of parts that make an aircraft up. Well, okay. CIG isn't going to do I, that. i got to ask a question. And Sorry, you, late, late person yeah. question coming in real hot. So literally, it's almost like Lego because Lego actually yes. have a part number for every single piece they make as well. Yep. That's yep. nuts. Yes, right. it's a Continue, lot like sorry. that. Except instead of the instead of the bricks uh, interlocking automatically, you're connecting it all with rivets, high locks, screws, uh, different types of fasteners. So, uh, solder in some cases, welding in others, <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, Mostly rivets and high locks. So, what, most so, you, so, so what you're saying is that the sum of their parts, they're not really one massive object. They're, they're a s assembly of different pieces. Absolutely. Yes. And the, and the really cool thing with riveting is if you do it right, uh, the sum of the parts becomes one complete part in itself. And it acts as one part because the loads transfer through each individual part through the whole of the hmm. total. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So... Yep. Let's let's break down um, like a, a, a realistic repair uh, thing. Can you guys give me a scenario that you think would work in game and out of game, and then we'll actually look at it outside and inside and and, and compare the two. Can you think of something? Um, yeah. So one thing we were were discussing was um, take like we were discussing the Vanguard earlier. So yep. we'll take the Vanguard for example. So. Um, yeah. We were talking about the long range capabilities and all. So let's just say you go out and you do a sortie. You're doing a long range strike mission and you're responding to somebody. So you're basically a quick responder and um, you're going to combat. You deal with the enemy, but at the same time, you lose your wing. That's something that happens all the time. Star Citizen, you lose a wing. So in real life, when you lose a wing, there's so many things that have to happen first before you can just get it repaired. And he and Vega can contest to this because he's he does he's done stuff like this too, and I've seen this firsthand. I, like you got to figure I've out. I've replaced wings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you got to figure them out. Firsthand. Oh yeah, you got to figure out. Like first of all, 
since you lost part of that wing, you lost your structural integrity. So what other parts connected to the wing has now been stressed to the point where it's basically that the structural integrity is gone. So that's so like the first of, thing you have to analyze. So, so kind of like how you were saying now, all riveted together to make it one piece because it's been damaged here. It may have caused damage right along, actually right into the fuselage, essentially. Yes. What, what could happen is basically your, your loads will transfer through the aircraft. And so let's say you hit the wing tip on something. Well, that load is going to transfer all the way down the, the wing. And you might not see it, but internally you could have snapped off a bunch of rivets. You could have cracking all the way down the wing. Or even at the wing root, you could have broken something. And you would never know it just by looking at it until mm -hmm. you actually investigate and do like non-destructive inspections and things like Thank that. Thank you. On That's it. what Some, I was getting. Someone clearly, didn't read, yeah. someone clearly didn't read that it said no step on the wing. Anyway. Um, oh, <laughs> that is on that. a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> Please continue. Especially on composite. <laughs> All right. So, so let's now. Can you talk a little bit about the process moving forward? Um, is it just like you go get a whole new wing made, or is there like a bunch of parts? Like, what's the step that goes? What's the next step? Because to me, I'm so assuming the that they would, would be... they would have spares around somewhere. I'm just assuming. I don't know. It depends on the on the Air Force, and it also depends on the location, but some of them do have spares. So, like, the people I work for, we do have wing spares. Um, so, if worst-case scenario, you just replace the wing if they want to get that thing operational right away. And then the broken wing would come to, like, my facility. We would investigate it. We would check it out. We tear it apart, replace all the broken stuff. Or if it's too far gone, the whole wing's just oh. destroyed. Um, but so, you so, repair it when you can repair it, but... If for combat aircraft, what you're doing is you're going to replace the part normally, get it back into service, and then send the broken part to a place that will fix it. So that broken part could possibly be repaired and become a spare itself. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. there is a bit of recycling that, involved. Okay, I like that. Okay, cool. ab Absolutely, because mm. that's all on the military's budget, so they try to recycle things. I mean, it's the same thing with avionics components as well. Think about in Star Citizen, it, it, let, let's say I have my let's say I have my power plant. My power yep. plant is shot. It's dead. Theoretically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy another power plant so my ship could work. But then that power plant is going to go to deep uh, go to go to the intermediate level and they're going to see if they can open up that that power plant and take a look inside and say, oh, this is what is this is what's messed up. They're going to fix it and then they're going to put it back on the stock shelf so that somebody else can use it just in case something happens. But think of that in like the military. Mm -hmm. It just goes back on a supply shelf until it's needed again. So it's, obvious it's just exactly. a cycle. So obvious and think quit. of like an auto repair situation as well. So like uh, you can buy a refurbished alternator from uh, AutoZone, you know, it's the same concept. Yep. Use, do you think, but do you think that's something, I'm, I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit and put that in the in-game as in regards to components. Do you think that's something that'll happen where someone will bring in a damaged component, they'll just buy a new one, leave the damaged one with you, you can repair the sub-components and fix it up and then Absolutely. sell it? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Pretty interesting. That, that would, remember that, so we had this talk about, that's like, that's what the Vulcan would be for. You mm. take, if, if you're a stranded ship, all I would need to do is give you the bare minimum to go do what you got to do. So theoretically, I would take a Vulcan, I would go right up next to you, and I would see if I can remove your old power plant that's busted, give you like a Class D power plant. It's not the best, but it's going to at least hopefully get you to where you are if it has the sufficient power requirements for the loadout and ship you have. Mm. And then I take that component in, and then I try to repair it myself. So then I either sell it, use it for myself, or if it's, if it's just... A, a crap you want to begin with i can use it for somebody else when a refurbish it and use it for somebody else when they are um in the same dire need for triple a so and then that, instead of you buying gonna stuff be... you're going through go ahead sorry yeah yeah no problem sorry let me cut you off that's gonna be interesting too with the omni tool on what you could actually repair firsthand on by yourself in your own ship that's going to be a really interesting concept when that comes into the game as well mm higher return on, on, on investment because you're not spending as much parts and money in order for you to make future funds as well. So mm -hmm. you think of the longevity yeah. of doing it yourself. All right. Well, you've kind and of... As far as structurally being able to replace the parts, I don't think that's going to happen in the game. I think it's going to be a lot different. You yeah. Just, just swap links around. So, so, so let's move on to that a little bit then because um, they do reference repair and... Um, 
salvaging as being very similar as in the the stripping of the hull i'm going i can see yep. now that we've done this repair episode i'm gonna have to go out and find a salvager but or or, 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 or wrecker <laughs> or someone like that and, and talk to them um but but i digress but but yeah so they they talk about it's the um it's almost like the stripping of each other yeah the stripping thing and that's more like a almost like a nano robot sucking and pushing type of thing um so that is very drastically different from anything regarding like if we go back to that wing thing um it, it's more like painting the wing off and painting the wing on and that's completely different to how it's done in real life so that that part is really different yeah yeah um, yeah. So one but the cool thing with that is, you know, in the future, what we're looking at is even in the modern day, we have 3D printing, we have on-spot CNCing, uh, we have a lot of really new cool welding techniques. Now, the modern aircraft we use don't um, utilize any of these things, but what's to say in the future, in, in CIG's yeah. future, that, you know, you, literally the wing is a 3D printed piece of uh, whatever space metal they're using. So you could go out with a drone do a repair on a wing and you're literally exactly. just printing or extruding the parts onto the wing that are broken and just replacing them on the spot with like a drone mm. or I even think, better yet with like the, the crucible. I think she said it best. Let's do it again. See. <laughs> Hand wavium. Hand wavium bullshit. Hand wavium. That just, that's like bubble gum <laughs> material that just forces, that just gets in, on the part and fixes it. But one thing mm. that, um, that, that I'm glad Vega, Vega brought up is first, this falls back to the core thing of um, repairing. We need to assess the battle damage. Like it's triage. What part is broken and how, can we even fix it to begin with? If you're in a combat situation and that this is the tears. So if you're in a combat situation and like you're on a rock and for some reason you take a little bit of structural damage or you lose a wheel, would you be able to do that yourself? Would that be considered tier zero or tier one, depending on the complexity of it? But just for just for uh, safekeeping, we'll say it's tier zero. You take your multi-tool and you put yourself a new wheel on. Cool, it's fixed, you go about your way, tier zero. Tier one, Veg and I were discussing was more of the drones, which is let you take a, a bullet, you take a bullet or a, a, a phaser to the freaking fuselage, and mm. it's either you have now altered the physical appearance of it because of the degradation mm. stuff they want to add and it's actually affecting your ship or you've you've uh destroyed the structural integrity so you actually use a drone to just put up a quick patch job on it mm. so then you can at least keep the life support one more and then you have <laughs> you, i know then you have like losing the wing this is where fabricating comes yeah. in and that's where the crucible comes in it goes from quick fix to fabricating a whole new piece mm. for that ship like that was the tears that yeah. me and him discussed earlier. So, so when are and we've seen that already a bit in in the verse, right? So with like the Vanguard uh, specifically, you you can lose a, a tail boom or a wing, and the rest of the ship can still fly, although mm. horribly. Um, oh, yeah. But it's enough to limp <laughs> you to the next repair station, right? Mm. And I think that's where the the crucible and the, and the repair stations are going to come in. Is yeah, you can get a drone, and it might stop mm. the bleeding per se. It might stop the the fire. Or the the venting of atmosphere, but it's not gonna. It shouldn't be able to replace a whole wing. So now, when it I, depends what CIG wants to do with that. But uh, yeah. So when I did the the mining episode with the geologist and the miner, the thing that they had already identified, which was really crazy, and I'm kind of going to ask you guys to go to this level of de detail too, was they actually went through and identified the four steps of a rollout of tiers. So their their first level of tier is essentially hand mining, and then they were able to add into the um, the, the prospector was doing a certain level and they could just take the prospector and go up through the tiers and they've actually evaluated that the miner is going to get to a certain level where it actually is the piney has a different role it's 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 actually about finding subsurface nodes right so I'm, I'm digressing here a bit but what i'm trying to ask is have you do you two gentlemen think you can identify where the repair is going to be in tier what tier zero but the stair the steps of the rollout of tiers that that's what i'm really interested in like can you I actually detail them out or do you think repairs less of a detailed um profession I, 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 I honestly feel like i just said it between tier zero tier mm -hmm. one all the way up to the crucible but i i don't know what do you think vega because i had a i think it's going to be yeah 
It's going to uh, look, it's, it's a video game at the end of the day and they're not going to make it to where you have to go into the crucible. You have to pull up a blueprint. You have to print <laughs> off this one spar to, for your damaged part. And then you have to print 30 more parts to make a tail boom of a Vanguard. That's not going to happen. Cause I actually, uh, <laughs> I actually think, I actually think you are going to have to print the frame. I actually think you may have to the frame, maybe, fab but fabricate you're not going to print the individual parts and then you're going to install them each individually yeah. by hand. That's not going to happen. There's going to be so some say, sort of video game aspect so go, to make let's it go, fun, right? Let's go, back, so, let's go back to the wing part. If the wing is completely blown off, I think you might I have to... I really love wings today. Well, that's just the example I'm using, bro. <laughs> I know. So you might have to print off the wing or something like the wing and then do the paint on stuff. I think that is literally might how uh, might how it might actually go, and and the first step might just be the painting, and then later on they bring in the other stuff because we do know there are a lot of machines on the Crucible that are not explained. Uh, I and, think it's going to be more of a it's going to be automated. It's it's going to be more video gamey. I think it's not going to go into that detail. It's going to be do I fix my ship? Do I have the ingredients in the hopper to fix it? And I hit the button and it fixes it through automation. Now, now, I know you uh, haven't seen the mining episode, because guess what? I haven't released it, right? But I'm telling you, wallets go into detail town. These guys proved without a shadow of a doubt to me where it is going. And I'm telling you, as detailed as you can make it is probably where it's going. I, I, I don't mean that lightly. So I want you to go as detailed as you think you can go. Right, I'm asking you for expertise. <laughs> like the most I, detailed I version. I want to be in space, riveting spars onto uh, vanguards. I doubt that. Yes, I, I <laughs> but agree I with that. Build my Omni tool, printing out that that hand wavium to fix my my hole in my ship. You know, it's going to be some sort of future tech, and there's going to be a reason behind it in lore. Uh, mm. But it's not going to be how it is in the modern day. Yep. Honestly, Vega, I feel like if anything, they would base it off more of comp composite repair, which is you do it in layers and then you bake it. Kind of, kind of like yes. that. Like they're probably going to do it off that, which is, oh, we're gonna like you, you fix it, and then you got to like, you know, the whole balancing act because they want to make things a mini game. It, the soapbox yep. not going to yep. go there. But I feel like if anything, they would base it off like composite reconstruct. Like if you, if anyone's ever seen composite and how you, you actually fix it or make it, it's in layers. Can you, ex can like you explain? Onion. Can you explain composite repair for us then? That's probably where we should. He be. can do it. Go yeah, for he, it, he, Vega. He, <laughs> so you uh you start with your uh certain materials right so you have your uh aramids your carbon fibers your fiberglasses right and then you use a, a resin uh impregnation process mm -hmm. so with some of the um uh, advanced composites it's it's pre-pregged from the factory so you just put it on like a patch and then you bake it using a heat blanket and a vacuum bag uh, to do certain patches uh, so, like, when you, when you have composites, it's a, it's a built-up layer of composite material, right? And if one layer gets damaged, you have, to, you have to blend out the damage area and then fill back in the damage and then bake on your repair, right? Mm. But the cool yeah. thing with, with the composite is it restores it back to pretty much 100%, um, if not over 100% to the original structural integrity of the part. And I think that would be something that would be really cool um, to do, like, for CIG, to say like all oh, these are all advanced composites or some advanced material exactly. to where we can weld it. We can, that is it. I mean, you think of composites, yeah. Yeah, that is it. So if that you, would if you actually, game. if you've actually, yeah, he, he's right though. But if you actually look at the documentation they've released on repair, they show something like a wound, like a, a shot or a bullet shot on the the ship's hull, and you have to remove the damage pieces, and then you have to kind of blend it back yeah. in, and and that's exactly literally what you were trying to explain. I think that's exactly where. Yeah, that's exactly what you do for composites. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the th the problem with composites in space uh, is uh, we're not really too sure with the how the resins will break down. Sure, there's it's you know with the future they can just explain it away. But if you look at what SpaceX is doing right now, they're actually using um, stainless steel in space. Okay. And so yep. uh, you get to the you get to the bleeding edge of of space flight, and they're going back to metals. They're not yeah. using composites as much anymore. Mm. A thousand years in the future, it could all change again. You never know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So you never know, but I mean, obviously, CIG is going to do what they have to do to make it uh, feel realistic mm. and make it uh, feel explainable. But according to you know, but that's the thing is, you can lose a wing off a of Vanguard in space mm. on in the atmosphere of Earth. Um, there's no pit stop on Cloud Nine. You lose a wing, you're pretty much the aircraft's done. So 
With the composite repair, how many different composited materials would you say you're working with? Like, if you give me, like, is it five oh. or six different compo components or composites, or like, is it is it just like you buy it and it's in I a mean, bottle, you can... or you mix them? Like, like, give me a rough you're... idea. I couldn't give you a number off the top of my head because it's always an evolving field on the edge yep. of like bleeding edge. Uh, but the main ones I've worked with are probably about like five or six. But then yep. at the same time, you have the people that argue like honeycomb bonded to uh, aluminum is a composite yep. material, which technically mm. it is because it's two different materials bonded together. So, but when you're talking about advanced composites, it's specifically talking about your like your carbon fibers, your aramids, your um, so, uh, so you're saying things so like you're, that. You, you said mentioned honeycomb. So, is texture also a factor? Is that actually a real thing? Like no. Colors? So, so what they do on a, a specific aircraft is, in, they need structural integrity inside of like a, a flight surface. Um, but in, so instead of leaving it hollow, they do a honeycomb core inside yeah. of it, and it gives you your structural integrity across the surface of the of the part, but also uh, reduces weight. So the reason I asked about the number of com uh, composites and components and stuff like that um, is the reclaimer is known to be collect a lot of those materials when it does the salvaging, so and they can be fed on yeah. to uh, things like the crucible. So I'm assuming that somewhere in the crucible there is like a machine where you can load in your different composites to start doing those yeah. repair, and it'll you know I'm sucking down this blue one. Yeah. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it colors, right? So I'm sucking down this blue one. Oh, that's run out. I need more of the blue, but I've got heaps of the red and the green left, you know. And and basically what it, it just as you draw, it just sucks what it needs from what cylinder or something like that. That's what I'm envisioning something along those lines. But that's a very futuristic machine that doesn't kind of respond to anything we've got today. Um but something like more, that more realistic is it would be a it'd be like a two-part solution so you have a part a and a part b it would yep. it would be uh loaded up it would come out the injector it would it would premix, which is what we have already yep. and then it would it would go into your bonded patch and you would inject it and it would do its thing it would cook mm -hmm. and it would be good to go yep but again that depends on what your tier of repair would be so that'd be like your mm. tier zeros yeah or maybe your tier ones but yep. your tier like uh, twos or threes, like with the crucible, will be replacing the part. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so I, I, my like tier zero to me seems to be the the stripping mechanic itself. I reckon then tier two would go into something more like um the composites themselves. So you need different parts to be able to like draw it back on, or in case of salvage, pull it back off. Um, and you'd be collecting those components and they'll turn into their separate components and then you could cargo shift them wherever you want. And then I think um, you've also got uh, components that we'll talk about in a minute. And I think that's a, a different tier altogether as in they're not... So what I'm... If you look at mining, it goes kind of like one, two, three, four. I think this kind of just goes zero, one, and that's it. Like it's it, it, it's two separate um, ones for components and ones for the, the repair. But that's just yeah, that's just me. I don't know if you guys agree with me on that, but that's well, that's, a, that's a question: is if CIG is going to count repairs as a, like one hundred percent return to structural integrity or not? Because I mean, it is a game. So if I go into a repair dock with my damaged aircraft, and then it goes through its percentage, you know, from whatever fifty to one hundred percent, and it's repaired, like does that aircraft keep a record of its previous damages? And then later when I get a different type of damage, it remembers the damages and then damages along the fault lines that were repaired, right? Mm. Where in a real aircraft that would happen, but in CIG's, air, in CIG's game, that probably won't happen. It'll probably be mm -hmm. your, mm. your health bar goes back to 100, your aircraft's good to go like it was brand new. The other thing you've just hit Whereas on too in the real, yeah. is, oh, I was going to continue, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so like in the the real Air Force, what would happen is even if you have heavy repairs on an aircraft, you have to have a reinspection of those repairs every so many flight hours. So it'd be like every four hundred hours, they need to reinspect the area, see if it cracks, see if it's damaged, see if we need to replace the part. Um, or there's even limitations sometimes on uh, a temp repair, right? So like on the C5s, sometimes we get them across the ocean. And we'd have to ferry fly them. So we do a temporary repair. They can only fly, you know, under this speed. They can only fly to this air base. And then they had to stop and get really repaired. Yep. So those would be like, you know, your your um, Vulcans and things like that. They might be able to temp repair you to get to the repair facility. Mm -hmm. But are they going to be able to get you 100% battle uh, ready again? So that, uh, that's a question that, yeah. A, a patch fix is what I assume you, you know, like a patch, a spot exactly. repair. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. That's something like, again, when... like the Vulcan does.
Yeah. Kind of like when I remember this is going to be a really bad analogy. I, I was a kid and I had this little blow up dinghy and my dad like put a little patch on it and, and like glued it on, but it looked really ugly. And then when we got home, he, um, he literally like cut the whole thing out and, and fixed it all properly and all that. So that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, you've also hit on something else that I've just kind of thought of. Um, you talked about the, uh, the, the frame replacement and stuff like that, but there's the wear and tear that's come in this patch. How much do you think that'll come into play for, um, repair, like repair people, but also things like new paint jobs and stuff like that. That seems to be in that wheelhouse, no, like the garage mentality. I'm assuming that's going to fall into your purview in game. Yeah. So I think for component wear and tear, that's going to be a, a seer question. Yeah. But for airframe repair and tear, I think it's going to be cosmetic only. I don't think it's going to affect the structural integrity of the airframes at all because how would you feel as a backer buying an air, like a, a spacecraft, and then it only works for a thousand hours? Mm. Yeah, but you've got insurance. You know, kind of so you can get a new one. You can get a new one under insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Got to buy a new one. Now, that's what United and all those guys have to do. They buy, you know, a 737. It works for, you know, 100,000 flat hours, and they have to retire it because you get micro fracturing, micro fracturing across the skins. The freaking um, they have course. a couple of real famous, yeah. So where the whole skins of the aircraft blew off because uh, metal fatigue uh, oh. from going up and down in altitude over so many years and so many flight hours, your metals literally disintegrate. So That's crazy. they're not going to do that. CIG isn't going to do that. That that's just way too that's just way too much for a video game in all honesty. Mm. Which would be yeah. the whole thing of what's what's the difference between fun and being too realistic? Because if we are too realistic, half of these ships wouldn't be freaking flying because they'll be down for something. Because we all know that's what it you would need two <laughs> you would need two freaking uh sabers just to make one fly. And one would just yeah. be canning parts off if we're gonna be real about it. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they'll ever that's something they'll ever implement is like like parts to speed up repair processes. Do you think that that's something that might come into later on down the line in, in certain tiers, someone that can make the frames that you paint over ahead of time. If that well, is I actually mean, become a thing. It could be because we've, we've theory craft about this again. I hate how I'm bringing this up, but it's like bringing it up with the Vulcan or like scrap metal in general. Mm. If you're able to just use scrap metal and use a, make it a quick patch job, use some kind of hand wavium paste, thermal paste that will stick on there or something like that so that you just have a quick fix and then, all right, go do what you need to do and then go fix the real thing later. Well, I won't be surprised if they do that. Well, if you look at it from my point of I view- I can see that too. I see the Vulcan doing the patch jobs on surface repairs, but then you get Absolutely. into say something like the Crucible, and you know you've got those massive big arms that move around. Maybe they can directly three D print the frame for you, and paint, and then you know another arm comes in and paints the the you know. Yes. So the Vulcan yeah. can only really yes. do patch yeah. patch repairs. It can't do those like rebuild the actual frame repairs. That that seems yeah, to they, be where it's going. They, yeah. Well, it seems the most fair way to minor. do it too. Or else you completely rule out the 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 crucible in general. The Vulcan can just do what the crucible can. I mean, going back to what you said about the whole tier thing, mm. I'm, when we're talking about repair, and uh, we talked about like diagnostic triage and how, what kind of battle damage we have and stuff like that. But I mean, if we're going to go to a tier zero, I feel like now that we've all discussed it, revisiting it, it would be more of using some kind of special paste that could be like um, what do you call it? Click clock, a uh, quick clock excuse me like a lot of mm. soldiers will use it um if for people who do not know what quick clot is it's basically i, I hate to say it, it's like a tampon you sh you take it and you put it in a <laughs> wound and it expands it absorbs the blood and it helps stop the bleeding well it's highly effective super effective but um <laughs> so, sorry it's also got to. some chemicals in there <laughs> yeah mm. to help sterilize and stuff like that too and um to help well, they make the better. blood uh, clot they got they got yeah, clotting uh going. Uh, I, yeah. Characteristics in it. As as a but lay person, it, it's I've heard like of that. I've heard of people using super glue to to stop wounds. Yeah. yeah, so something yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, whatever you got to do, as long as you don't poison yourself at the end. But I mean, not with super glue. But well, to I me, mean, it's like, gonna it'd be some sort of uh, resin paste or liquid metal type thing that exactly. they would use. It depends what they decide they want the aircraft or the spacecraft to be made out of, really. Because I mean, we look at the mining tool or the mining laser or the the salvage. What's going to be the salvage laser? All these are lasers, right? 
Mm. So what's them to say like, oh, this isn't some sp- future space metal where we can just weld everything? Because mm. that would actually make more sense to me than the the composite thing. But the composite thing might play a factor as well. It just depends which way they want to go. Because at the end of the day, they can justify either way. Yeah, they can just make some bullshit lore post up and just be like, yep, this is which the is way. what it's a game though, guys. It's a yeah, game. Kind of, so. Yeah. so, so what I'm hearing specifically is because of the way they're doing it with the kind of hand waving and stuff, we're not we don't have enough information to go fully into detail on where they're going to go on that yet. So this might be a, a, a topic yeah. that we come back to when we do know more about it. Um, so let's move on to then about the components here because that we do have a little bit more light on. How do you feel that they're going to go with that, man? Well, they already talked about subcomponents, and Chris Roberts himself says he wants you to have very fine control over how your ship performs. So you have your regular components, your power plants, your shield generators, your freaking coolers, and then you have these different types of subcomponents that will um, determine how much the efficiency, determine the uh, the power output in general, determine the quickness of a, of a component. I would have to pull up my chart. I, I haven't been studying uh, subcomponents a lot. But, I mean, it's these, I believe there's four different types, and they're all structured like class A, B, C, D for how valuable they are. Mm-hmm. And I th- and you 100% will be able to um, fix it. Think of it as the first line of defense. You would rather lose a subcomponent than lose the actual component. So yes. I feel like this will be something that will help uh distribute the workload internal to the component itself so if something is to fail it's a subcomponent versus you losing the whole component in general and then you just have to go and fix it itself where they talk about shutting down the component itself opening it up going inside grabbing removing getting somewhere else inside the ship inventory and slapping a new one in then actually turning the component back on and it's back to full function is something like that so you want What's to repair up? excuse me you want to repair or replace that before you repair the main component is what i'm hearing if you're in flight it will be more of um it it will be first it'll be in flight troubleshooting you figure out what the problem is isolate it if you can restart it if you can i i know it's probably not going to happen here in star citizen but it theoretically if i'm in combat and i'm in a hammerhead and i know when my power plant is failing and the the um, the um the co-pilot or the engineer is diagnosing the power plant and figuring out oh I'm losing my 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 efficiency is going down let me see let me look inside the power plant and you should get like a a drop down kind of like when you go into file explorer and you're looking at the root directories mm. inside of each other the same thing you look and see like okay this subcomponent mm. is good this one is like sixty percent or this one's like thirty percent on the wear and tear and degrading okay, I need to sh- tell them I'm shutting this down and I got a new one. I'm going to slap it in R and R, remove and replace, slap the new one in, turn it back on. Like, okay, everything's functioning normally or the whole balancing act of, of just, well, they've even said stuff. like physically, like they're, because of the physicalized components of like pulling the power supply out. And it's probably going to be even like when you pull the power supply out and look inside of it, you might be able to visually see which one was damaged. And they yep. replace it. And the likelihood of you carrying around, uh, let's say, just uh, subcomponents in a box, right, are probably a lot higher than being able to carry, like, just spare components. Mm. Right. Right. Especially so you're not going to carry out spare power supplies, but you yeah. might carry a box with you know, all these, like, subcomponents A, B, C, and D. And then you could just replace those as needed mm. because those are common replacements. It's like having a but- like a circuit breaker chip or something like that i would think but sears the expert on that but to go full circle back to the start of but to go full circle back to the start of the episode when we're talking about the wing and then i asked about so they recycle wings you take that subcomponent you go back to the repair desk i'm thinking the one in the carrick specifically yeah you go back to the carrick you repair it and bring it back to 100 percent efficiency and use it again that's where i see it going that'd be ideal yeah rinse and that'd be cool yeah Mm. It, it's all about efficiency so yeah i mean there's been times where i mean there's been times where um i've been troubleshooting like on the tanker and um something i would like to see and for people who are also uh that work in computers remember a subcomponent or a component is a is a computer and a communication box in itself if you open up an avionics component you're going to see circuit cards which are command and logic cards Full of them and distrib- and some uh, power distribution inside there too and, and the cooling bullshit. But it's command and logic. You have one component talking to another one in the end. So I know, right? 
No, I just no, I just Crazy. had an epiphany. I just had an epiphany. I'll explain it in a minute. All right, all right. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I'll, 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 I'll. I mean, I was just gonna ramble on, so go ahead. You so say you know, thing before. you know, when I was talking about how they have a machine and the machine has the different things that, like, you know, the blue, the green one, whatever. What if they have at the repair station for the subcomponents? They use the same system, but you repair the small ones. So it's like what they were talking about uh, when they've talked about the ping system. They want it to work on in space. In vehicles and on ships, but it's the same thing all the way across. So you take that same system, you take it from repairing actual ships, and you bring it down to repairing actual components. And you could use the same materials to repair the subcomponents. So it's the same yeah. system. And then you, th th all of a sudden, there's yeah. another tier that you've got. So you, I we, mean, could, well, we could initially see ships being repaired, then components being repaired as a second tier. Sorry. Did, this is why I well, feel you, like we, there's two sorry. parts to repair. I, I apologize. <laughs> we're, all, we're talking all over each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lots I, of I, I, <laughs> I feel like there's two parts to repair. There's repair and there's fabrication. Because I, 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 I feel like once you're in the actual verse and you salvage something, and like it kind of reminds me of Eve, like when you can salvage these circuit cards. I find a circuit card, I go and I fix it on a bench, and I put it somewhere. Like I know where the circuit card can be used for. And I'm going to save this circuit card for later. And then if I need to fix a subcomponent, I take it back to the bench, put that circuit card that I fixed a long ass time ago inside there, slap that puppy, say this can fit so much freaking CIG freaking uh, bullshit in there, that's, and then just call it a day. I think I think you I think you've nailed it, see, because that's what they talked about in the vulture. The vulture would mainly be getting components, and then I can see that person taking the the half broken components back to someone that repairs them and then puts them back into working order. Or, you know, yeah. or strips them down and breaks them back into their materials and then uses them on other subcomponents to get them back up and running. There's exactly. the cycle. There's well, the whole cycle. I can see it all now. It all makes sense to me now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you look at any crafting system in any other game or any other MMO. That is the system, right? So yeah. it's not like they're really reinventing the wheel here, uh, but you just have to look at what your other crafting systems are. <laughs> Say you make, like in Star Wars Galaxies, you'd make a... Uh, <laughs> You make like a spacecraft or you want to break it back down, you would melt it and you'd get a lot of your components back. You wouldn't get 100% back, but you get like 70% of them back. Mm -hmm. And then that, you would, you'd have to build, you'd have to take your raw material, refine it to material, and then you would take that, that material and you would manufacture it into your like subcomponents and then use your subcomponents to make your component and then your component would go into your spacecraft, right? And so they that, might... that is the whole thing and it's all tied together. They might make yep. it though so that when you recycle something, you don't get it all back. Like there's a bit of waste or something like that. And it's how good are yeah, you at yeah. getting as much back as possible and stuff like that. Yeah. Is that skill associated with, um, God, I'm moving off into reclaiming and salvage and all that, but like they're so <laughs> well, integrated. Yeah, it all I ties in together. Now. Yeah, it, it really ties is. In together. I might have to, I might have to drop in the title somewhere repair and salvage or something because it really is like it, it's that interlinked now. Uh, I didn't see it as interlinked at it. Like, well, I, I knew it was, but it is a lot more than I, I thought it was. Oh, wow. I didn't think I'd get an epiphany today, but I got one. So, yeah, thank you. No, it, it, well, it's mine, good that you get too. Hmm. Of course, that's where you get your raw resources from. Yeah. yeah. It, it all, so, I mean, it, it all ties together. Yeah. It, this, yeah. Is, this is why I've told people if you want to do a profession, you need to understand what actually goes into this profession. If you want to be somebody who refuels or repairs, then you need to think about if I do I want to be the person that just does the job or do I want to be self-sustaining? Do I want to be self-sufficient? If you want to do this, then you're going to have to get invest either real money or money in the game to get multiple ships so that you make sure you can self-sustain yourself for the most efficiency in game. Because mm -hmm. if you're just buying the fuel yourself, then what's your ROI? But if you're taking the time to actually like mine and get quantonium, uh, quantonium or go get this with whatever and then actually go refuel people, it may take longer, but I feel like there will be a trade-off you're I, actually able to do it faster and efficiently. I don't think you as a soloist could be self-sufficient from what I've been learning. Mm. Um, no. It is, there's too much time required. Like, let, Let's take a real basic ship like the Starfarer because a lot of people go, oh, I can grab my fuel, but what happens when the ship breaks down? You have to rely on someone else at another point. At some point, you have to rely on someone else. And that, and that, that I think, is key to this game, getting everyone to work together. I think that's really good. To be, really like be fair, you can have even refining. Yeah, even refining your materials, like it's going to be more efficient to go to like a station and do it there. 
than it is to do it out on your ship. We're, We're not sure yet. Refining ship yourself. I've, I've had the mining people mm. tell me the mining people reckon that the refining ships will be more prof, uh, better than the refining uh, stations. I really, so I, I really we'll hope the refining see. ship is Misk. I mean, MISC. I hope it's MISC. There's no reason it shouldn't be. Sorry, we get, off topic. We get enough <laughs> topic a little bit here, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, guys, that I think I am going to wrap it up here. That was really good. Um, I didn't at, when we started this. I thought we're not going to get to Epiphany today, but we did. So I'm I'm really happy. I got we, the, we got there. <laughs> um, yeah. It, well, the mining one. Well, do I got, we have any more bullet points to hit left, or were we good on those? No, we're good. We hit all our bullet points. It's all good. We're, I've got notes above ah. me because I'm I'm an idiot and I have to follow along. Uh, so I put <laughs> bullet points on my second screen. But you know, we got every single one. A little bit of out of order, but we got there all. Um, eh. Yeah, so I, I can see that the, the tier system is not as direct as other professions, um, but I I also do think it's a little bit more spread out as a profession than, than a lot of the others. Um, and I do appreciate your time, uh, Sia and Vega, for coming along today. Now, Vega, I know yep. you wanted to do a shout out, so please go ahead. Well, I'd like to shout out my org shoot first. It's uh, just me and my buddy Balian, but you can check us out on uh, Spectrum. <laughs> And we're mm -hmm. welcoming anybody who wants to hang out with us. I'd also yep. like to uh, shout out Synchronizers. I'm an affiliate with them, and I've been welcome to hang out with them all the time. So just give those guys a shout out too. Can you tell us a little bit about what your your org, you and your buddy, want to go into just for people that want to possibly come and uh, hang out with you guys? Yeah, sure. We're, uh, we're a casual group. We just like to play for fun, nothing too hardcore. Uh, we're the only org in the verse who thinks we shoot first, and we're still the good guys. Right. So you're lunatics, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no worries. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right, see it. Are you going to be doing any more videos on your channel anytime soon? Uh, yeah, I, I really, yeah, I'm trying. I'm going to try tomorrow to do the at least the M2 and C2. I do have a Nova Tank buyer's guide kind of thing mm -hmm. that I've been been uh sitting on that I actually think I can release. Yep. I just apologize. I I've been so busy trying to get my production company up and running, but it's finally it's finally at that point. So. I can I, I can come back? Can I get you a, a, as a promise on video to come do a buyer's guide for the Hercules with me when they release? <laughs> uh, I mean, I can try. We'll what, see. It, we'll try. I'll I'll make I'll make time for it. I'll make time yep. for it. I'll make all time right. for people actually say I want to see Seer again. If they don't, all then right. nah. No, <laughs> there all, there, there's always people that say hi when you pop up, so it'll be all good. All right, then I'll do our hashtag Jake in the comments. Um, please let us know today your thoughts on repair. Did did it click for you? It it, it clicked for me today. Like I, I actually saw the the full loop and and how it could actually all integrate together and work. So I thought that was really important. Um, fortunately, Jaden yep. uh, passed away, and um, he's um mate is looking for a new ship um no, no, not a new ship <laughs> a new home for his um his mate ship um with an f7a upgrade which is um very rare to find these days i apologize for my voice i've had a real week i almost lost it last weekend and i'm right on the verge of losing it again but uh i i shudder to think what it's going to be like with evictus coming up but we'll see all right thanks again uh, for joining also, us also uh execute mm -hmm. Uh, one last thing, I just like to say uh, that maintainers were pretty much our own worst critics. So I'm mm. sure we'll hear full in the comments about what me and uh, Sierra messed up. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no doubt. Well, we're always welcoming uh, welcoming input here, so we can all learn. So yeah, I, I take any comments in, in the uh, comments to heart, and and I definitely analyze them and, and look through them. But um, yeah, I I really think we kind of got got to where it's going to possibly go i was really happy with how this episode came out today so thanks again he's been c to six he's been vega fell i've been executed and we'll catch you in the next one <laughs>